guys, welcome to the Hustle & Flow podcast. The platform we use to explore varying perspectives and opinion through a candid conversation. We chat about philosophy, business, and all things life. I'm Sean The Hustle. And I'm Les The Flow. Let's go. All right, bro. Today is my turn for the topic. And uh, I want to talk about something that uh, is constantly sort of uh, in my thoughts and something that I observe and I find is quite an interesting approach and I guess behavior of, of people in general. And that is um, surrounding the concept of seeking. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time, and as, as everyone sort of would gather by now, like I'm, I'm one that likes to observe people's behaviors and just, um, I guess, break them down and see what um, the root of uh, that type of behavior is. And a lot of interactions I have with people, it's, it's surrounding like this, this need to seek or look for something, you know, and it's always like there's an implication in the word seeking, but it's um, from a place outside of ourselves. We're looking for something to, to appease uh, some seeming need that we have, you know, even if it's like a, a noble um, uh, a noble cause, you know, if we, if we want to call it that, like, you know, for example, I want to better myself. So I'm going to go out and, you know, learn something or study something or whatever it is. Uh, even in the, the very general sense, like we, we talk about sometimes the, um, <clears throat> the classic analogy of the, the, the rat race, the, the hamster wheel, um, you know, that, um, that treadmill type life of looking for something to, uh, or seeking for something to, you know, um, fulfill an urge. So I want to talk about that, you know, that concept, that behavior, that approach to life, that, that perspective, what, what it means. And yeah. So what, what, what comes up for you when I say those things? Um, well, seeking for me, like actually is one of those things that I, see as a positive thing Mm. myself um it's interesting you mentioned that you know when you when you think about the word seeking it's generally about people looking for things outside of themselves um and when i think about seeking i've like i guess recently a lot more starting to seek things within myself to be able to achieve the things that i want to achieve Mm. i think um you know people are always seeking For sure. I think that's definitely a thing. I think people are always um, looking to get to somewhere else. Yeah. And I think that's that's an interesting part about seeking that we can talk about. Totally. Because, yeah, it's interesting, you know, like whoever you talk to, they never seem to be where they want to be. Very rarely. Very rarely. And and that's, that's a very important part of the conversation. And like, you're right. Like contextually, it can it can be um, a positive thing or a ne- negative thing, and I guess the way I've highlighted it is in that general um, negative um, perspective. In that we're lo- always looking for something outside of ourselves, right? Yeah. But like you said, you can flip it and 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 um, see it in a positive light as well. But like you know, talk. Let's let's talk about um that that feeling or 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 lack of you know contentment you know in being or wanting to be somewhere else than you are yeah you know let's talk about that a little bit more cool you know? so i think a lot of that stems from comparison um which there's more of than ever in this day and age mm. right everyone talks about it but it's because it is everywhere and it's prolific it's like everyone's looking at the highlight reels of people on social media you see what people are doing well, not quite at the moment, but before this, like everybody's traveling, they've got nice things, they've, they're buying expensive shit that you mm. like to, um, that you haven't got yet. So everybody's kind of comparing their lives to these highlight reels of other people. And whether they have really thought about why it is they want those things or not, they tend to want those things or think they want those things and, and they seek out ways to be able to get them um, or to be able to do certain things, right? Right. I think a lot of it does come from comparison and thinking that someone else's situation is better than yours 
and that you want to be in that same sort of situation. Mm. So I think a lot of it stems from that. I think a lot of people start delving down a certain path to quote unquote seek something um, once they've compared their life or their situation to someone else and then start to try and figure out what they can do in order to start getting closer to that thing that they think they want. Yeah. And are you thinking that, I guess, it's this, um, I guess, this modern or current landscape or environment is like, you know, the place where it's most conducive for that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because if you think back, um, even, you know, when we were younger, we're in this interesting age group, right? Because when we were in school, there was computers, but there was no internet for a while. Mm. And then we got the internet. Um, it wasn't very fast. So what you could do on the internet. And also there wasn't like social media or any of that stuff um, for quite a while. And then social media really became, I guess, like prolific when we were probably around like 18 to our early 20s, right? So we went through school, like our whole schooling life with little technology, mm. um, you know, mobile phones, like there was computers, but fucking forget mobile phones. Like we all got mobile phones in our later years in high school and they were like Nokia brick phones. Yeah. And it used to charge you by the minute to talk to someone and a text message used to have a fixed cost. So when you wrote someone something or you sent a text, you were really uh, careful or about what you wrote because you only had a certain amount of characters mm. and you didn't want to pay for two texts. You only wanted to pay for one text because you're a kid and you don't have a shit ton of money, right? Um, so that was, I guess, what we had to communicate and to learn about other people's lives, right? It was just TV, a bit of computer, and then our friends around us. Um, and I think, you know, to extrapolate that, um, you know, people that were older, our parents, anyone else, you, your frame of reference for what you were exposed to was definitely smaller. Yeah. Right? So I guess I bring that up because I think about that in terms of if there's less for you to compare to, um, the uh, likely less things that you're going to want. Like if you've never seen something or been exposed to something, it's going to be very difficult for you to want it because you actually don't know about it. <laughs> like you know nothing about it. You haven't been exposed. Yeah. Um, you're not really going to desire that to which you have not been exposed. Like logically, that's not going to happen, right? So whereas now at our very fingertips, like in our smartphones, um, there's tons of apps. Internet is just like a bound with a bounty of information, imagery, videos, um, photos, blogs, articles, anything about anything, anything and everything, right? Good things, dark things, um, things that bring pleasure, things that can bring people a lot of pain. Mm. Um, there's just all this, like there's just so much out there, so much out there for people to take in, to assess, and then also compare to, right? And and you, you're exposed to a lot more. So, you know, Think about things like, you know, you hear people say things like, oh, I, I want a jet. Dude, who did you hear about wanting a jet when we were like 20 years old? That wasn't that long ago. Mm. There's no one, man, because no one knew that people had private jets. It wasn't a thing that you knew about, right? There would be uber like billionaires or celebrities that rode on private jets, but that wasn't a thing. And I just bring that up to my point of, there was no exposure to that. So you can't compare your life to that and, and desire it, right? Yeah. And, and a jet might be, you know, a big thing to like an expensive item, right? That a lot of people might say they want, but very few will actually aspire to, but, or get to in their lifetime. But there's a lot of other things that are within reach or just out of reach that people are really trying to achieve. And I think it comes from being exposed to these things. And then just going for it a lot of the times without thinking about why you want to do it. It's because you see someone else, they look happy to you and whatever you think happiness is or what you've been taught or what you've, you know, essentially been conditioned to feel. 
um, is success or happiness or, or better than what you have. And then you start to try, try and seek that out. And so, you know, with so much to compare, there's going to be so much that you can try and seek out and, and try to get for yourself. But like, why? I, yeah. I think that's the thing the, um, that's interesting to, yeah. to think about. I mean, there's a few things that I want to follow that you said, and it's, they're great points. And it might start to delve down this road of, you know, understanding why perhaps. And like, firstly, it's this, you know, notion of a, a point of reference, having a point of reference, right? And having a point of reference to me, like that creates that, um, that viewpoint of uh, like comparison, you know, um, and comparison, like you were saying, it has this, you know, implication behind it in that um, it's, it's on a scale. It's, a, it's on a, um, it's on like a spectrum, you know, and on one end there's there's a positive and the other end there's a negative, mm -hmm. you know. That that is created through comparison yep. and having a point of reference, right? But that in itself, as an individual, it's a subjective thing. But it's That's not right. taken it's not taken as such in, in the general context. Right? I'd agree with that. Outside of that, now we're talking about um, you know, having this like collective frame of reference and outside of that i think you mentioned exposure and i think exposure is something that we need to discern between that and experience right mm. i think they're very different things good point like exposure like you said in terms of like exposure to to things generally in the world like it's it's in an abundance we we know this like you you've listed off a whole um, shitload of things and there is a myriad of just things in the world that that everyone has exposure to but how do we draw the connection between like being exposed to something and then feeling that we understand it at an experiential level you know because to me like you cannot make a judgment of something like at the at the deepest level until you have experienced it yourself. And this is like these old ways of thinking in terms of like education and knowledge and things like that. The difference between, um, you know, information and, and wisdom or knowledge and wisdom is the experience in my mm -hmm. mind, you know, yep. you experience it and it becomes part of you, but until it is experienced, it's just knowledge. Yep. It, it's, it's lifeless, you know, it has no like, um, personal essence to it you know it hasn't been molded to who you are so that that's an experience uh, that's a uh, an interesting thing for me because yes exposure vast experience maybe not like even talking about the the private jet yep. um, example of course we know so many people now you know have have those sorts of you know um experiences and they share those things on on like social media you know grant cardone and um all those types of people they they flaunt that stuff and it looks cool sure but how do we actually know that it's going to elicit the same you know positive emotional reaction in us as an individual we're assuming and i think what we think that it's going to but it's very different in my mind. Well, straight up, you don't. You don't know if it will. Um, and that's a really good point you bring up, man, which is like the difference between exposure and experience. Because you'll be exposed to something, but how much of it you're exposed to is actually um, what I think lends to it becoming an experience or not. Yeah. Right? Like if you just see something, how much can you really know about it? Yeah. If you've been exposed to something um, by just seeing it on Instagram or reading an article about it, and what one person said about it, like it's a very low level of exposure. Whereas if you know someone with private jet and they're your best friend and you fly on it all the time, that's experience. Yeah. Because you know what it's like to, when you get to the airport, what it's like before you get onto the jet. Is it easier? Is it not? Um, what service do you get on a private jet? Do you like it? 
Um, is it faster? Is it not? I don't know, mm-hmm. right? So all these things, that would be an actual experience. And I think length of time of exposure dictates experience or not. I think that's one element of it, right? It's How like, do you mean? So like, um, for example, th- I think about things like um, you can learn a lot about things by being exposed to them for a long period of time, right? So like um, if you want to learn how to cook, you can watch a lot of videos, right? You might see one of those little clips on Instagram that shows you how to make something like a four-hour barbecue, right? Mm. And you'll be like, oh, cool. I know how to do that now. You don't really know how to do it. There's no experience in what you were just in that uh, little bit of exposure you have, right? Mm. But then if you jump on and start to look at more detailed videos, maybe you see a video of the entire prep, how they load it onto the spit or whatever it is. And then you see exactly step by step what they do, right? You're then being exposed for a longer period of time. You're getting a lot more of an in-depth, um, you know, look into that. You will learn. You've seen someone who's actually doing it do it, right? So their experience is, is now um, coming into you and, and you can take that on board and use it going forward. And then you might go to like a barbecue festival, and see how people actually do it, right? You might get pulled up out of the crowd and they might help you to do something. And then you actually start to experience it. These are all just different levels of exposure, right? But the more you are exposed to something, the more you learn about it and the more experience you will gain. That's what I mean by that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But I guess it's a different way of talking about experience in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, to me, like you're not – going to experience it until you actually do it, you know, no matter how much exposure you get. And like, this is, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Like yep. this is like classic, um, say the example of, um, public speaking, mm-hmm. you know, you can sit here and watch all these videos about people talking about how you can approach it, you know, work on your confidence and, you know, do your uh, power postures and all that shit, how you can prepare for it. But at the end of the day, you're not going to um, learn how to do it or you're not going to be, I guess, you're you're not going to get better at doing it or even learn what it's like to do it until you actually do it. You actually experience it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and that's exactly, you're not actually experiencing it. And and I get where you're coming from, right? Um, And I guess to clarify like where, where mind is, where my mind is, on exposure and experience, right? It's like you can be exposed to something for a certain amount of time, but there's also the level of exposure, Mm. right? Like there's these two continuums for me, like on the X, so the one that runs across, there's like um, your time, right? So you could be exposed to something a lot of times, but at a very low level, right? Mm. Um, And there's also, like when we talk about exposure, there's, many different types of exposure there's you can watch a video you can read something or you can be standing next to someone doing it right um so they're very different levels like yeah using the cooking experience again you could watch videos or you could read a recipe or you could be standing next to a very well-versed chef mm. right that is showing you and, and you see exactly what they're doing and there's a whole feel to it right so there's like this time so you can be ex- exposed to something a number of times at a very low level, but then on the y-axis, right, the one that runs up, there's like your level of exposure. So how much of that thing or experience are you actually being exposed to? Yeah. And and what is that? And I think that lends itself um, or is a determinant of how much experience you're actually going to gain from the exposure. I think like exposure leads to experience because you need to be exposed to something and, sure. and doing it to actually sure. gain the experience. I think you're talking about like the depth of exposure. That's right. right? Yeah. 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 And I would, I would agree to that. I mean, at the end of the day, like the, the example you can talk about and there's something very practical, like, you know, uh, for me, you can read as much about, you know, playing basketball as mm-hmm. much as you like, you know, yep. watch as many videos as much as you like, but until you pick up a ball and start fucking bouncing it, you're not going to know. That's what right. It's, like, it's just like know? playing an instrument. Yeah. Right, like guitar, you can watch guys show you how to pluck strings, where to put your fingers, and everything. 
until you actually grab a guitar and start to try and place your fingers. You're never going to know what it feels like, that your fingers are going to hurt for the first few weeks mm. and all that stuff. Like there's just no way you can know. Yeah. So, um, and that's the thing, right? Coming back to like seeking and the things that we seek out and the things that we try to experience, I guess, or think we want to experience, the level of exposure I feel dictates if you actually want it or not. Yep. Right? Like, you can see something that looks great. You've been exposed to it at a very low level. And then you think you really want it. And not just think, like you really want it. Okay? You desire it. Mm. But then you become, you gain more and more levels of exposure to something. And then you, you start doing it. And then you're like, I actually don't really like this. Yeah. Right? And then, and then you don't want it anymore. Yeah. So the level of exposure, because we've talked a lot about it, to bring it back to you know our topic of seeking mm-hmm. is important because I feel that the level of exposure actually helps you to determine if what you're seeking is something you actually want to keep seeking or not. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think like this, this comes back to like you mentioned it before about, you know, conditioning, right? And to me, this is where it's leading to, you know, in terms of like this, this mindset or approach to, to life and, um, and looking for things outside of ourselves and how um, the, the wider society is built around people these days. You know, it's a form of conditioning you know, because the, the stuff that comes out, um, although we as individuals may think that there's no level of um, you know, vetting or control or direction in terms of what is going out there of course there is right of course there is like certain things are released to um i guess seem like individuals have like uh, freedom of will to do certain things but obviously those platforms that are offered like social media there are guidelines to to take a certain ways and incentivize certain um uh content to be released right And that's what it is. And um, it's an interesting, I guess, way of thinking about the, the behavior behind seeking, right? Yeah. So we're, we're in this environment where we've got a shitload of exposure and it's, it's relatively curated, in my opinion. I think that yeah. there's like, you can, like, if, if we, you know, took the time, we could nicely... Um, you know, categorize things you yeah. know, that are out there. Uh, so there's like various categories that appeal to different, you know, tastes and needs and things like that. And that's all out there. And it's, and it's being, you know, pushed uh, to us, you know, every second and every moment of the day. And we have that all around as an abundance of exposure. But there isn't necessarily that experience. Yeah. But we still seek that which we do not subjectively understand whether it is good or bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Like I think we're exposed to so much, but it's a lot of low level exposure. Yeah. And without really thinking about it, we get led down these paths of, of what is, you know, good, what's bad, what's a virtue and what's not. And you keep getting barraged with certain things. Um, one, when you're, expo- when you're being exposed to one thing, very rarely you'd be exposed to another, right? Like your focus is on that thing. You keep getting certain shit put in front of you, it becomes your point of focus, mm. right? So if you're always looking at rich people with expensive shiny things and they're all telling you about how good it is, very likely you're going to start thinking that that sort of lifestyle that they're portraying is something that you should want, something that you should aspire to. And a lot of those times, you know, like whenever someone puts something out, and I don't mean this in a negative way, like there's an agenda behind it, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's like they either want to show something about themselves for a certain reaction or response. They want to sell something. Um, Like there's a reason that people share things, right? They they want a certain type of response. They want to gain something. They want to, um, you know, elicit some type of response yeah, and then some action based on that yeah. generally. Of course. So you got to think about that as well. 
I'm like, why is this stuff being put in front of you? Why is someone actually taking the time to share this and put this out, mm-hmm. right? They may have very good intentions. They may have intentions that aren't so great that just serve them, right? You need to think about all that sort of stuff. Um, but my point is, is like you're being exposed to things for a reason. Like someone has a reason they're doing that. Yeah. And then you need to stop helicopter up and think about why someone might be sharing that with you because that is an important reason to stop and think about whether the things that you are now seeking and, and aspiring towards are actually things that you want to be aspiring towards, right? Like why is it that you think this is cool now? Yeah. Why is this something that you think you should be aspiring to now? Mm. Why is um, you know this lifestyle that you see one that you want? Like, what is it about that that you want? Has someone told you that it's great? Do you actually know what it's like? Do you know anything else above what a few, like a handful of people that you don't actually know have told you about this thing? Mm. Right? Like, you need to think about that stuff before you start seeking out a life of that. But even before that, and like, I agree with you, right? 100%. There there has to be some level of, you know, um, um, I guess, independent inquiry you know of for yourself to really understand what it is that is being sold to you quote unquote but even before all of that you're talking about the things that are being put in front of people we we also have to understand before we even look into those things we have a choice on whether we look or not you know and be exposed to those things yeah we do have a choice Mm -hmm. like the the best example that, that i can give is just the general media and the news and things like that you don't have to fucking watch it. You don't, you know, regardless of what, what they're um, putting out is true or not. Like that doesn't matter. Like m- me personally, mm-hmm. I have made the conscious choice of not to watch it because I just, I don't feel like it, it, it serves me in any way. And that's my choice, right? So you don't have to watch it. And you don't have to then be swayed one way or another by what they're trying to tell you and how you then interpret it. Right. Mm -hmm. So even before all that, there is that choice that we each, you know, consciously or unconsciously, unconsciously make on whether we consume what is what we're being exposed to or not. Right. And that again, that again affects your experience of life in general to me. Right. And then that tells you what you want or don't want to do. Right. And, And to me, like if you are being directed by what is being put in front of you that is external to you, then you may not be very clear on what you actually want inside, right? Like you were saying before in terms of like the things that are put out there, it's, there's, there's, of course, there's like a ton of stuff that is just wacky, wacky AF, right? Yeah. But then there's also stuff that is, you know, people intend for it to be um, helpful, you know, and um, is backed by good intention. I think this podcast is an example of that, right? We have no intention behind this other than to help people um, expand their horizons and their perspectives on things and maybe think in a different way or question things around them and be curious about life, right? So in that regard, I think that seeking things, it's like, to me, that's inspiration, right? Whatever it is, if it's good or bad, it, it inspires you to do something, right? Mm-hmm. Or think a certain way or feel a certain way. So inspiration is always something that is, you know, um, attained outside of oneself. But then what does that translate to inside, you know? And that's the difference. Like we talk about intuition sometimes mm-hmm. and intuition is always something that comes from within, right? Yep. And that is the connection between you being inspired, inspired by something outside of yourself and then having the intuition or in that intuitive knowing of what it means to you. Yeah. Right? How you translate that inspiration. Yeah. You know? And it's not always exactly how someone says it to you and that's how you're going to translate it. And that's the point. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the gut feel. That's, that's like bridging the gap. Like, you know, there's that bridge between intuition and and inspiration is that it's your own translation and interpretation of what that means right mm-hmm. and that's that trust piece because you're not always going to know 100 percent, 
you know? So like, I think that that bridge plays a little bit of a part in terms of why people seek, because firstly, there isn't that connection. It's just not there. So we don't even know how to use our intuition most of the time. But secondly, like I said, we, if we don't know what we want inside, like truly for ourselves, then we're going to, you know, what, what, do you, what would you traditionally do? You just, you know, try things out and you experience them for yourselves. And like you said, you might come down a road and say, this looks really cool. I'm going to fucking try it. And you try it a few times and you're like, well, actually, it's kind of shitty. Mm -hmm. So I'll go on to the next thing, you know. I think what's really interesting as well to follow on from that is like, I think it's interesting to see if you're actually being led or you're seeking. They're very different. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, um, you know, are you actually, is someone putting things out to you? Are you being exposed to things? Are you, are you letting yourself be exposed to things, right? Because as you said, there's a choice. Mm. And um, is what you're taking in actually, are you just being drawn to something, right? And then following? And is, for that to happen, someone's leading you down that path or something is leading you down that, right? Which is different in my mind to making a conscious choice to pursue something and then seeking. Yep. I get where you're coming from and I agree in the context that you're putting it. Yep. But also I would say that, and this comes back to the conditioning part of things, mm -hmm. we don't know. Like there's a point where people just simply don't know whether they're yeah. being led or they're act actively seeking. And, and that's why I bring that you up. You can actively seek or think that you're actively seeking something that you think that you want, but it's not. You're just being conditioned to think that way. Do you know what I mean? That's right. So that's, that's still seeking. We're on the same wavelength right now. And that's the thing. It's like, are you actually seeking something out or are you being led? Mm. And you don't know it. Mm. Like you don't realize it. And I think that happens to all of us. Totally. Right? Because there are mechanisms of our brain that people know how to hack essentially, um, how to get our attention, how to lead us down a path. That's happening to us all the time. That's what marketing and advertising does. Mm. Right? So... Um, I think that's really important to know and to think about as well is you need to work out if you're actually being led or if you're actually truly seeking based on your choices and, and using your intuition is a good, good guide for that. But that's skill, like it's a honed skill. We've really? talked about this before, right? You can look at intuition as hokey as you want. All I ask you to do is to look more into it, actually just listen to your gut whatever you think that means to you and start to delve down this path of your intuition and you will start to realize it's, it's happening for me a lot more now, right? Is people that you think are successful in whatever they're successful in, they don't talk about it a lot, but when you talk to them behind closed doors or in private or, you know, something where they don't think that they're being judged, a lot of people talk about this intuition thing, which is guiding them, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think the people that do and that I've been exposed to and know do use their intuition, it's a hone skill. It's always a hone skill. No one that I know has just been like from the get-go just trusted their gut. And again, it, you can think it's as woo as it is, but like until you actually experience it, that's another thing that I think, and you know that, right? Like it's very dangerous to talk about things that you don't know about or haven't experienced yourself. Mm. So I just implore you, if you're someone who thinks are, like you dismiss intuition, to look at it a bit bit more deeply and, and to actually try and start to feel your own intuition because once you start to hone that skill, you realize it is a skill and it is very useful in your life and it's one of those things that is within you and it's not being led. Yeah. And that's why it's important because you can then actually discern things for yourself that are right for you or not, that are actually right for you or not, right? Yeah. And then you can actually start to pursue things and seek things that are true to you. Mm. That's why I feel your intuition is very important. Yeah, I think it's key. It's key because like like you said, and and I think that just building on, you know, the, the sentiment of having to hone this skill, mm -hmm. but this is like anything, right? Like think about when you first 
um, entered school in kindergarten or whatever it was, like you didn't know how to read or write. Intuition is another form of communication. Yep. This is how I uh, describe it. Yeah, and, and you've described the, it this way before. And, and it's this is like, the best way that I yeah. can describe it. And people and, should listen up. You know, yeah. and, it, and it's not, it's not like, you know, 100% black, black and white, the same type of communication that we're using right now in terms of language, right? This is ancient communication because intuition have always been, like you said, it's always been with us. We're just not taught how to use it, you know? So how can you, you know, think that it's something that you can turn on and off, right? It's like anything. It takes time to learn these skills. And if you don't put in the effort to try, then you're never going to be able to have this skill for yourself. Like I myself have practiced for years and years, like how to hone this skill. And for me, I still think that I'm not that great at it, right? But I know exactly what it is because I've felt it and experienced it multiple times. And I've just taken the time to practice and watch it and hear it and, you know, use this form of communication because you feel it, right? It's a different um, type of communication. Mm -hmm. It's not verbal, but doesn't mean that it isn't communication, right? So that is important to note in terms of like this, this honed skill of intuition. And this for me is... Um, the critical factor in terms of this disconnect, right? Because if we don't have this connection between our intellectualized thinking, and this is like just what we're talking about right now, like our, our very common way of thinking about, you know, um, anything in life really, like most of the time when we're thinking or talking, it's it's from a cognitive intellectual um, angle, but if we don't connect that to our intu intuitive knowing of ourselves, and you said this, this is like innately your own, right? You are born with this. And, you know, different um, doctrines and modalities of, of religion and all these sorts of things will tell you something different about them. But we know that it's innately ours mm -hmm. as a personal, like as an individual and we're born with it. So that should tell you something about who you are and what that means to you, right? If you're born with it, then, you know, maybe it's like the, um, the loose way of answering this question, what is your purpose? You know, what is your purpose? If you strip down all the layers of um, conditioning and, and intellectualizing, then this is what you're born to do. Like a tree is born to, or the tree grows to produce uh, the air that we breathe, you know, and a bee is like, you know, born to do whatever it does and, the, and the, all everything else in, in nature. And we have our role as well. And, and, and as individuals, we, we each hold, um, I guess, a unique role and it, it needn't be, you know, dressed and polished and, um, you know, quote unquote, perfect in, in the eyes of, of modern society, but it is ours, you know? So there's that disconnect, right? That, that then elicits the, the emptiness and wanting to fulfill that or fill that hole, or fill that gap, that mm -hmm. void in ourselves. Because to me, the, if we're missing something and we're feeling empty, we want to, you know, be contented in some way, shape or form. We want to be fulfilled and that's why we seek outside, right? And we somewhat, sometimes might mistake the, you know, fleeting emotions of happiness and things like that for what life is about. And it comes back to this point that you raised before about um, wanting to be somewhere else other than where you are, mm -hmm. you know, um, that's always going to be a factor if you're looking outside in my mind. Yeah, for sure it is. And um, it's your, I think you're attaching meaning to certain things without actually working out what they mean to you. 
right? And it's interesting when we spoke with um, with Jiro, right? He's like, it's not all these other bad things that are happening in your life, like uh, that are bringing you down. It's essentially a lack of meaning that you have in your life that leads to these things that you feel are bringing you down, mm. right? Because when you have, um, you know, when you have meaning in your life, that's when things start to happen for you. That's when things start to go right. That's when you feel good, right? And coming back to intuition, like you've said it before, which is intuition is like your communication with yourself, Mm. you know? And it is. Like I really feel that it is. Um, I feel there's like the way we communicate with ourselves and that's why when something happens or you experience something or you meet something, like it feels right or not. Yeah. We all say it, man. We all say it doesn't feel right. That's your intuition. Yeah. That's your intuition, right? Mm-hmm. And it's because you are, you know, there's more than just what you're told and what you see. And th- the many different elements of things that, you know, are swirling around this universe impact us. And then how we feel dictates how we act. Yeah. Right? That's why um, it's really important to pay attention to how you feel. Yeah. It is because you're going to act on, based on how you feel. Mm. And you can inter- try and intellectualize shit as much as you want. You feel like shit, you ex- you're experiencing certain emotions in a moment. Whatever you try to intellectualize is not going to help you. Yeah. Right? But if you can hone this skill of your intuition, of like of knowing internally, feeling internally and what that means for you, right? You can move forward much better usually. Yeah. And I think just going back to the like the reasons for seeking and things like this. I think at the end of the day, at a at a very at a high level, if we we sort of remove ourselves from the detail, then I think that a lot of the time it's it's really looking for like a means to heal. Do you know what I mean? To to like to better a a state that you're not happy with or you're not yeah. you're not you don't feel whole in this state right there's something amiss right you feel like it's a sickness almost right and you want to heal but there's there's so many like uh, it's it's said a lot i think like you know true healing happens from within right and and th- this thing is I, I i don't think there's like any truer words um in my mind in terms of like what we're talking about here. Um, like I said, there's, there's always noble endeavors, you know, to go out and seek to better oneself and find truth and all that sort of thing. But it's always like, it's always within us. The truth is always within. So in my mind, if you're seeking externally, then it should be simply for inspiration to elicit you know, that intuitive knowing inside, you know, to find that truth. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's a way to clarify, you know, that's what I see the external stimulus as. You yeah. Know? It's not actually a concrete thing for you to say, oh, yep, he's inspirational. He does X, Y, and Z. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z so I can stand in his shoes. Mm. You know, that's not it. Like, this is like the the same concepts behind, you know, people talk about it all the time. And I think we talk about it in a couple of other podcasts about the law of attraction and people just saying, oh, you know, I'm going to wish shit into, um, you know, into physical form because I want it. But again, this is things that you think that you want, but you don't actually, you may not actually want, mm-hmm. right? So for me, like the, the principles behind it is not about, you know, getting shit outside of yourself, but it's really understanding what's real or what's not for you and living that in alignment to that. That to me is how it works, you know, at a very practical level. Yeah. And I think that's like a really interesting thing you brought up. Now think about it, you know, it's, um, it's already within you and the things you're seeking are external, which, you know, can 
or should be, you know, we're very careful when we use that word should, but it's like should be to um, essentially bolster that which is within, right? To aid that which is within you to then move forward and be the person you want to be. And there's this thing with seeking, right? When you think about it, whenever you're seeking, it's to find something. Mm. That's it. You search to find. Yeah. You seek to find. But when you find that thing, what is it for? Right? It's to appease something within you, some feeling that you want to feel at the end of the, like at the very end of the day, that's what it is. Mm. You want to feel a certain way. You know, like even when you want to do something to make someone else happy or to do something that they like, it's essentially so that you do that thing for that person because it makes you feel good. Yeah. That you have done that for that person. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. Right? But it's like, but out here doing all these things, we're searching for all these things, we're seeking, right? In order to appease ourselves and that which is within us. And, and essentially at the very end of the day, how we feel. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. the things that you're seeking externally, you need to make sure that they're, gonna, that they're you know, actually going to align with who you are and what you want. And to do that, you need to think about what you really want. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like we've talked about a lot of different things today, but to me, that's the crux of it, right? It's like work out why you're seeking things yeah. and are they actually what you want in your life? And we talk about this all the time. Like is what you want actually what you want, yeah. what you think you want? And that's why we talk about intuition and all these things because it's like as humans, we intellectualize things so much and, and we put data and facts and science and all this stuff like – science being theories and, and what we consider fact on this pedestal. And we tend to relegate feeling as this thing that, you know, distracts us or stops us from um, being these smart, super sentient beings that know all and, and can do better. And mm. it's just not the case, man. It isn't. And, like, I think the way, the way to put it is, like, you can – do you think you know what you want or do you feel, you know, you know what you need, right? There's, it's very different there. Yes. Like one is a heart-centered feeling versus like a very mind-centered thought, intellectualization. Yep. And it's not to say one's bad and one's good, right? It's just the fact that is at this point in time in history, we overanalyze and we over um, I guess we we prop up the importance of inter intellection so much that that we negate everything else outside of that. But they they should work in harmony. These yep. two things, right? Definitely. Like we've been given both these, I guess, abilities to think and feel for a reason, mm -hmm. right? It's not to ignore one or the other, you know. Like the analogy that I like to use. Um, when, when we'll talk about the, the truth or the answer is found within is like, imagine you're, you're in a jail cell, right? And you're looking everywhere for the key to get out, but it's in your fucking pocket, you know, like, you know, you're yelling out to the, the jail guard and you're trying to dig a hole and, and you're, you're trying to you know, get the attention of everyone who walks past and, you know, get them to um, strike some deals to, to get you out. But, you know, your freedom is in your fucking pocket, you know, from this jail cell. And you're just not looking. You choose to look outside. Yeah. And it's fruitless. Like, it's very blunt to say that. And I'm sure that, like, you know, this is a very general way of just saying, but... Generally, I feel that it's a fruitless endeavor. You know, outside of, you know, seeing some inspiration from outside of yourself to assist you in eliciting um, your, your connection with your in intuitive feelings. It, it's, it's fruitless, you know, to look outside of oneself. Like to me, if, you, if we talk about, you know, meaning, and like you mentioned it before, and I think that this topic of meaning and purpose is like totally its own podcast mm -hmm. so I won't delve down it too much but like that can be you know intellectualized 
to anything we want, mm -hmm. you know, anything that we want. And that to me is inspiration that comes from within, you know, like if we create our own meaning and it inspires us to continue to move, you know, continue to grow and evolve, then that's, that's perfect. But really in the grander context of things, generally like there, there really is no meaning. Well, there's just like the meaning we attach to things, right? And and one thing you said, like searching outside of yourself is fruitless. I personally would disagree with that. Only I agree that like what we need is within us, right? The the thing I disagree with is like we can take inspiration from that which is outside of ourselves, yeah, right, and use that to bolster what is within us, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. to do things, yeah, yeah, right. So like. If you yelled out to someone outside that jail cell and you're like, I need to get out, I need a key. And someone goes, man, just look inside your pocket. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, no, that's what I said. Like, you know, yeah. inspiration so, yeah. comes from outside. So it's not right? fruitless, right? Outside of but that. it's like, it's inspiration, which is like something to be used. But it has to be used. Yeah. Right? That's the key to that. And you well. have to use it yourself. You that's have to right. internalize it and that's do right. something with it. It has yourself. to be used yourself. And like, an interesting thing to, to talk about is like, you know, um, and this is like these types of rhetorical questions that come from Zen Buddhism. It's like, is a leg a leg if you don't use it? You know, is a life a life if you just sit on the couch and just fucking piss it away? You know, it, it isn't, right? There, there has to be a use to it. That is part of the whole. Mm -hmm. It is part of the, the thing, right? Like for us to say, yeah, it's a leg, it's there, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if you're not using it, then is it actually a leg? Because that is part of it's cons like what it's, uh, what constitutes it. Like, it's not just a thing. It is a leg because it helps us move. We walk on them, but mm -hmm. if we don't walk on them, then is it a leg? Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. just a label, right? So what I'm trying to say is like the part of it that is important is the use of it. Mm -hmm. right the action and this is like about life as well like if you don't live your life the way that it's innately meant to be lived then it's a waste it's not life it's like pissing away an existence into the wind you know this is like these these epiphanies that people get when they're on their deathbed and they're like oh fuck i wish i did x y and z i wish like I felt like this, but I never did it because of like A, B and C, you know, there has to be that action that is taken for yourself to figure it out. You know, you have to move. Mm -hmm. So like that is, that to me is critical, right? It's critical. It's not just about say, again, you, take inspiration from someone else and you act exactly the same way as them without feeling whether that is the right way for you, you know? Yeah. A lot of people do that. And mm -hmm. to me, in the grander scheme of things, in terms of understanding one's own truth, that is fruitless. Outside of, unless you are aware enough to take the lessons from it, right? Mm -hmm. And inspiration, and again, apply them in a way that is about understanding or discovering more about yourself and what you truly want yeah. or need. Well, to know? me, that's the value of inspiration, Yeah. right? It's to, to be inspired by something, right? And when you're inspired by something, it doesn't mean to mimic it. Yeah. Right? And that's what I mean. Like inspiration, it's valuable, but only yeah. if you use it. Yeah. Only if you use it. Yeah. Because if it's there on its own outside and it's floating around in the ether, because we know, man, like we're talking about, like the podcast is a fucking, is, is an example of it. And the internet is full of the shit. There's so many quotes and inspirational things out there, but it doesn't mean shit until you use it. Yeah. You know, until it like resonates with you deep below that intellectual level. And then you put something into action on the, on the back of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So like to me, that again, like is necessary action makes the inspiration action makes the thing otherwise it means nothing in my yeah, mind i agree 
You know? No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to delve too deeply into the meaning or, or purpose thing. Yeah. I think that, again, that's probably going to be, going to be another um, a meaty discussion that we might leave to another time. Um, but, yeah, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about on the back no, of this not today, topic, man? man? Right. Well, how about you share about where people can find you, bro? Yeah, easiest place to find me is just on Instagram. So just Sean underscore Coop. That's S-H-A-U-N underscore C-O-O-P. And how about you, mate? Where can they find you? Yeah, just on my website, findingspace.co. Um, you can also find me on my social pages, uh, Instagram and Facebook at findingspace.co. Um, you can also send Sean and I an email um, through, our web, uh, through our email address. Um, any queries or questions about this episode or any past episodes or you want to recommend a guest or you want to be a guest, uh, the hustle and flow podcast at gmail.com. And a humble request, a little fee we asked for, for listening to the podcast. If you took some value out of our discussion today, some thoughts were provoked for you. Um, something, a little nugget that you took out that you feel is worth sharing with someone else. Please just share it with one other person. We're on Spotify, Apple podcasts and stitcher. So really easy to share out. If you have some time, please do leave us a review on any of those platforms. It really helps us, um, you know, with the podcast and getting it out to people. As we talked about, you know, the whole point of this podcast for us is to provoke thought, get people thinking differently, perhaps feeling differently, because when we think better and feel better, we can do better. And so we'd really appreciate if you can help us in our mission sharing this out. And until next time, guys. See you guys.